Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another accessibility review. Today we're looking at Touring Carts. It's a free app lab game, and uh, this is it. This is the whole game. Aren't, aren't these graphics just amazing? Um, obviously, I'm joking. This is just the, the start menu. And um, right off the bat, as far as accessibility is concerned, it's not great. The menu is, I'm about the center of my play space, and the menu is way out there. I can't read it. Even if I come forward to the edge of my play space, it's still, still about 10, maybe 20 feet out there. And all it's asking is if you want to, it is point and click by the way. You have finger laser. It's just asking if you want to grab boxes and power-ups with your right hand or left hand. And then if you want to use a hand motion control or a joystick, the little thumbstick on your controller, as the steering mechanism. Now, I know this because I took a picture and I zoomed in real close and I was able to read it, but I, I can't read it from here. I can try to step back to the edge of my play space, very back, and reposition using the, I think that's the X button, is what the game's reposition button is. And now I can walk to the, for the front of my play space and I can kind of read it now. Um, virtual hand, joystick, and then that's just pictures of left and right hand. But I have about a three meter play space, right? That's almost 10 feet. You might not have that. And you can only reposition as far as you can actually move. So let's say, let's say I'm close to the front of my play space here. Let's say this is your center and you'd only have two steps back as the edge of your play space and you recenter, it's not gonna make much of a difference. Now the good thing is there's only two options here and you can change them in the main menu um, once you actually get to the game. So we're gonna go right hand, we're gonna go motion control. See, there's only the two options. My first time through, I just clicked one of the options not knowing what it would do and it worked out. So here we are at the main menu. It looks like an arcade game or something. Real quick, I wanna mention, there was a tutorial. I'm not sure if I actually got any footage of it but I basically just plowed through it because I didn't know what it was even trying to tell me. It was just this person over here with a speech bubble and a bunch of text. Couldn't read that text, so I just kept hitting the trigger button and it just kept moving forward. It made me do my first race, and I assume it told me how to actually play the game, or how the game works, but I didn't realize I could actually stand up out of my cart and go over here and right here is where the bubble was. I didn't realize I could just walk up to it. But the tutorial was easy enough, so it didn't really seem like a big deal uh, to get through. So now talking about the actual menu here, um, we have another finger laser, but this one is stuck to the cart. So, like, you can get up, but see, my hand doesn't follow me. It's stuck to the confines of as far as you can put your arm out of the cart. Now, you can get closer to the menu itself. So you can see, you can get pretty close, actually. It says single player, multiplayer, quick race, and garage. There's a settings button up here in the top left corner, and then a few other buttons. I'm not quite sure what they do. But once you know what the buttons are, there are audio clicks. You can hear that. And the button does highlight. So you can come back over here to your cart, sit back down, and hopefully you can see enough to, to see that the the button at the top there is highlighted. Um, if not, using the menus is going to be pretty challenging for you. It was pretty challenging for me at first, but now that I'm more familiar with the menu, 
um, it's not so bad. Click that and see. Again, it's pretty hard to see where the highlighted section is, but I do know this first button up here is normal difficulty and then hard difficulty and then you have your race your racetrack selecting. But it is still pretty hard to see. Um, I wish they would make it to where you can actually move your hand. See, because the problem is, is you can point here, and as you move further away, it, it gets really weird, and then it just, your hand just disappears eventually. So, you can't just get close and then point at the screen. You actually have to do it from way back here for some reason. No, but you can kind of do it from here. So, there you go, that's a little better. But it's still really hard. Another thing to note with the sort of uh, UI in general is down here is the steering wheel. It's got some things on it. Those, there's, looks like zeros. Um, but I can't read this. I have no idea what any of this is. And you would think just get closer, but the occlusion plane is really far forward. So, like, right there, it starts to, to clip through the camera or it starts disappearing. Um, so you can't really get closer. I, all I can see is that there's the two zeros in the center, and there's like a circle with something in it, there's like an empty circle, and a few things here at the bottom. So maybe it's like a lap counter, or, or something like that, or maybe it tells you what place you're in in the race. I have no idea, so uh, be aware of that. I don't know if it's important information, but I was able to complete a race and I didn't really need to look at the wheel, so there's that. Racing is pretty straightforward. You just hold the trigger and steer. Um, it's just racing. However. Since it's in VR, it's kind of like driving an actual go-kart, so if you're not good at fast-paced looking around type stuff, or, or like if you can't see the wall coming up, um, you might have a little bit of a hard time. The game is pretty forgiving, though, so if you run into a wall, like let's say if I just keep going, or actually if I just fall in the water, respawn. If you run into the wall, you get bumped off. There is also a respawn button. So you just press it and you respawn. The power-ups are pretty easy to see. These big floating blocks. They're glowing too, I think. Yep, big glowing yellow blocks. What I get? Banana? Throw that. These hazards, they're pretty big. Easy to spot. Um, there's that. There is also, so real quick, you can see here, the water kind of blends into the track. So some of these tracks, uh, the con, some of these tracks, the contrast isn't great. Um, I think that's part of the challenge. However, when you're visually impaired, um, it can be more like three times as hard as it was meant to be. There is also different camera modes. You can press the one button on the left controller and you get this sort of uh, over the top behind the cart kind of view. You can press it again and you'll be back in the chair. You're sort of just looking at the screen. And I like this one though. And that's pretty much the game. Okay, so final thoughts. I'm gonna give this game a solid right in the middle 5.5. Because here's the deal. Once you know what you're doing, once you've actually looked at all the menus and stuff and all the buttons, it's pretty easy to navigate and it's a really fun game to play, but 
if you are visually impaired and you get into this game, it's going to be really difficult to navigate the menus because of, mainly because of this. The fact that you can't get up to the menus and click on them. You can do one or the other. Like I showed earlier, you can get up to the menu and read it, but then you have to come back here and click it from all the way back here. And for some people, that's just not going to work. Like me personally, I can see the, the highlighted top button there, and now the second button, and third and fourth, and I know it goes single player, multiplayer, quick race, and garage. But even buttons like these up top, or th this one in the corner, there's no indicator of where you're pointing except for this really thin, hard to see laser, and you just kind of have to wave your hand around until you see that turn white or turn yellow. So if you can't see that, you're not going to really be able to um, to know what you're clicking on. I feel like they could very easily solve that by just detaching the hands from the body. You can't even really see the body anyway. It's really only for the other player's um, benefit when you're in multiplayer. So just detach the hands, or at least in this menu, so that way we can get close and also make our selection. The good news is this game is free. So you can pick it up and if it turns out you just can't play it, there's no downside. You haven't wasted any money. I know we've all been there as blind gamers. We buy a game thinking we can play it and for one reason or another we just can't. It's really disappointing. But in this case, it doesn't have to be like that. The game's free, so even if you don't think you can play it, maybe pick it up and just try it. Well, that is going to do it for this review of Touring Carts. If you liked the video, why not give it a thumbs up? If you want to see more reviews in the future, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have a blind friend, or visually impaired friend, why not share the video with them? I'm sure they'll appreciate it. If you happen to be a developer of this game, or any other VR game for that matter, please take into consideration some of the things I've said. Gaming should be for everyone, and when we all can play, we all have fun. But that's all for now. I'm Helix, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.